All right, here we go to one more podcast now today with the one and only Coach Fred Lee. <laughs> yeah, clap it up for Coach Fred Lee. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up? What's good? <laughs> hey, Coach. Uh, this is my wrestling coach. Uh, coach Fred uh, has a tremendous uh, career in wrestling. Um, he's coaching us here at Atos headquarters since 2013. Right, Coach? Yeah, 2013. 2013, yes. So, um, man, Coach Fred has a huge role on my success in um, getting better in my wrestling, the success of uh, Atos Headquarters Wrestling. So you guys can send a message right now, send a question for us. I just post on my Instagram. We're going to be answering some questions. But we're going to be flowing here. I, I have a couple questions, so you guys are going to know a little bit more about uh, Coach Fred Leave, you know? So, Coach... Yes. Where where were you born, Coach? Where, where's the the town that you're born here? I was in born States? in New York City. New York? Yeah, actually, uh, Harlem Hospital. Um, really? Spanish Harlem area. Wow. Yeah. I thought you were from Florida. Oh no. Oh dang. <laughs> yeah. No, Florida. I was. Uh, I just went there for, I think, two years. Uh, like, uh, you know. Hey, Coach. Worked there for two years, but uh, I'm originally from New York. I was born there, uh -huh. raised there, and mostly grew up in Ohio and Cleveland. Oh wow. So, yeah. what, do you start training wrestling there in Ohio or where? Yeah, I started wrestling in Ohio when I was like a little kid. When did you start? Uh, I was like five years old. So Five years old. Yeah. Do you have anyone from your family that starts? Yeah, yeah. I have uh, like my brother wrestled. Uh, my uncle, he wrestled. Oh, your um, uncle. Yeah. So, he was the one that motivated you to wrestle or what? Yeah. And, you know, it was nothing else. It was nothing better to do really? as a kid. It was either... You know, wrestle or do sports just in general or mm -hmm. like sell drugs. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was pretty rough where I grew up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you went to college? Yep. I went to Montana State University Northern. It's like a... What is their degree, coach? Exercise, physiology, nutrition. Nice, coach. Nice. Yeah, I love it, man. Like being just fitness and sports and yeah. health. It's like something I've always done. Yeah, yeah. Man, Coach Fred, like, how old are you now, Coach? Can you say your age? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you might think I was a dinosaur. Then. No, Coach, you look young, man. You look sharp always. No, I just, uh, I'll be 46 this year. 46, Coach. Yeah. Man, this guy is so fast. I don't feel fast. like it, but. Uh, yeah. Coach Fred is so fast. Like, he's like a lightning. Like, he's <laughs> really fast. I, I, can't, I can't imagine, like, how fast you, you were when you're, like, 18 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, dang, man. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was okay. Because, <laughs> man, like, right now you're, like, like super, super fast in your movements, man. It's no, it's, crazy. it's, uh, they call it, uh, one of my friends, uh, Joe Duarte. Uh-huh. He's, uh, you know, fight, he used to fight MMA, a lot of jiu-jitsu, too, as well. Yeah. And he used to call me, uh, he used to say, man, like, no matter how old you get, man, you still quick. And he, so he called it black Black. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, if you're watching, I was you used to always tell me that. He you was know, your your coach? Your no, coach? just a teammate. Who was um, your coach, coach? Well, it depends. You know, college it was this guy named David Ray. Um, mm -hmm. he wrestled at Iowa for Dan Gable. Mm. And then I had a coach named uh Greg Gascon in junior college at Cerritos College. Mm -hmm. Um uh, Jeff Smith. He was also another, another um, coach of mine. Mm. I, have, I had a lot of good inspirational coaches throughout my career. That helps a lot, Coach. Yeah, like father figures. Yeah, you know? yeah, those guys are amazing. I think coaches are pivotal to the success and development of their athletes. You know, yeah. I mean, you know that as a professor. Of course. It's motivating and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's very important, right, Coach. And you, your classes are really cool, like, you always motivate us. You're always there, you know? Yeah. Um, you like to train with us. That's really good. I think this aspect, uh, it's amazing because you do all the warm-up with us. And, like, sometimes I have those, like, uh, crazy drills at the end. You always, like, like to join <laughs> as well and be part of the drill. I'm like, man, this guy is, like, 40-something. And he's, like, doing all that. Like, it's, it's kind of like when you do the whole life, it's... It's easy, right, Coach? Of course. You know, yeah. I think it's it's just kind of like leading by example. Like, mm -hmm. the things that I put you guys through through training, I try to do as well because it's like, it makes, if I can do it, you can do it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And that's why, like, yeah. I love training still at this very moment. At this, yeah. You know, even with 
all the injuries and all the surgeries, like I still come train. I still yeah. love to do it with you guys. You but know? like your your uh, surgery, for example, like what kind of surgery have? Well, <clears throat> I've had um, the hip replaced. Replaced. I've had, that was their first surgery ever. Or no? Yes. Really. And that was my first surgery. But you had that like how old were you? Like. 40 um, years old already? Like No, I was 45, 40, yeah, I was like 40 when I first had my first that was surgery. Like five, six years ago? Yeah, about five years ago. Six years ago now. Six years ago, huh? Yeah, I had yeah. my uh, my first surgery. Um, it was just to open up the hip because um, yeah. I got like some kind of, I got like a, an infection in my hip. So, uh -huh. and they don't know how, but yeah. they opened it up, cleaned it out, and then it came back a year later. Yeah. And then they opened it up, cleaned it out again. And by that point, they said, well, you need to get your hip replaced because you have no more cartilage left. The wow. infection killed all the cartilage in your hip. Oh, okay. And I kept putting it off because I didn't want, I was just really apprehensive and scared about getting the hip totally replaced yeah. at my age. Yeah, that's like, a tough decision for everyone that has, man. like, an active lifestyle. Yeah. Like, you always, like, doing something, and then you <laughs> think, like, man, I'll be, like, three months, four months, like taking like time to recover was like what six months four months How well long? the first surgery when they opened and cleaned it it was about a year Damn, like it literally took about a year to recover yeah. wow and a lot of it was you know like it's it's like a domino effect you know my first surgery um they were telling me i would never be able to compete again or even train wow and you mix that with like depression yeah. from not being able to train and yeah. then you mix that with Taking pain meds. I mean, I got hooked on pain meds. It's really? crazy. Wow. Yeah. But are you okay right now, Coach? Right now, I'm great. Nice. Better nice. than ever. Yeah, um, you look great, man. I got the titanium hip replaced, so it's nice. It's you're like good. A, you're like half a robot right now. I'm like Bionic Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, what was the name of that show back in the day? Um, Million Dollar Man. Uh, Steve Austin. Uh, Steve Austin. You remember yeah. that? The Million Dollar Man. Yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, the, the Bionic Man, oh, that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like back in the, my early days as a child, I used to yeah. watch that show. Wow. <laughs> Man, Coach. Uh, coach, um, what is your your uh, thoughts about, um, about like, drilling? Like, what is your thoughts about that? Like, how important is, like, drilling um, wrestling? Like, how, how, like, because I feel like, in wrestling, there's a more profound training uh, methodology, let's say, you know. In jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu is a very new sport, let's say, compared to wrestling. Wrestling is like there since the first Olympics, Yeah. right? So there's a lot of research, there's a lot of like studies, right? Because for a country, it's really important to 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 have athletes with gold medal, you know, it's in the, at the Olympic Games, right? Exactly. So they, they have a really profound study in drilling and all that. And with all your experience as well, um, what is your thoughts about that? Because the jiu-jitsu guys, there's a lot of people that they, they first, like, they don't know how to drill, I think. Like, they don't know how to drill. Uh, they think it's just, like, executing the technique, like, slowly, you know. But there's a way for you to drill, right? So, uh, yeah, like, because I see the wrestlers, like, they... They like they have a dynamic when they drill, you know, like so as in judo. Yeah. Like they very dynamic. They go back and forth. It's pretty much like a fight, but it's like floating, you know. It's it's, it's crazy. Like how how that works in wrestling. Like the importance of wrestling and the drilling aspect of wrestling is, it's obviously with any sport. Like in order to master particular techniques, you have to drill at repetition constantly over and over again. Um, and the intensity level that wrestlers, that type of drilling and that type of uh, physical aspect to it, it's it's like it's an intensity that's just not matched by most sports. I mean, I think mm -hmm. like here at Oswich Jiu Jitsu, the Jiu Jitsu here is like are equated to like like Iowa rest like wrestling, you know, like Iowa wrestling. Um, like the intensity level is high, mm -hmm. and I think that being able to like have good workout partners, have good teammates um, that have that same mindset that you have. You have to be surround yourself with those type of like like minded people. Mm -hmm. So when you have like somebody that wants to be a champion and you have a whole team full of those kind of guys, then it makes you drilling. It makes getting better like 
just just a different level yeah but i think like drilling is like number one like you have to be able to drill those techniques and be able to execute them like all the time yeah the same intensity level um yeah it's like it's like in basketball they gotta do a drill like in soccer they gotta do as well right i'm talking every single sport right i'm talking like hunt like thousands and thousands and thousands of the same technique just doing them over and over again over over years i mean i think of it like just for me being instilled in me as a kid like five six years old wrestling Mm -hmm. like hitting double legs like from that age all the way till now yeah like that's thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of just drilling yeah because that's what i see in jiu-jitsu for example like you have like a lot of kids doing jiu-jitsu nowadays and in some places like you see you see kids that they like they're like sloppy, you know, like they're like, you know, like some, some place, some schools, they're like sloppy, they're slow, they don't pay attention, they're not focused. Uh-huh. Like, I don't think it's because of the kids or the group of kids that you have is most like the methodology that you have, like teaching the kids, right? Yeah. And I feel that in judo and wrestling, like you guys are so ahead of, of this type of met- methodology that you're getting, you guys already have that, you know? So in jiu-jitsu, I feel like people are learning that. It's not everyone that knows how to to build a good methodology of drilling, you know, in jiu-jitsu, so. And I think a lot yeah. of that equates to, like, wrestling is one of the oldest and most original sports mm-hmm. when it comes to combat. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, which started back in the Greco-Roman days, you know, Greco-Roman Olympics. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... It's the oldest sport, so it, it has a long history of, like, building that kind of, like, methodology and that type of, like, um, that mindset. So, yeah, it's a mindset, right? Yeah, it's definitely a mindset for sure. And, and you got to bring that mindset um, to the kids, right? And it starts from the top down, you know, yeah. like, the coaches, like, the coaches set the tempo of their teams, right? Yeah. The coaches set the tempo of practice. Yeah. Um, like day to day. I mean, like if you have a coach that just kind of like lacks the days of cool and they just have like a whatever attitude, like that trickles down to the team, mm-hmm. to each athlete. Yeah. But if you have that coach that comes in every day and like they have their system in place, they know what this what they're gonna teach, they know how they're gonna run practice, like and they have a high a high intensity as a coach, that mm-hmm. trickles down to the team. And then you got team, you got a a team full of savages coming up yeah. and they all have that mentality that intensity level that's high mm-hmm. um that that feeling of like wanting to succeed and become yeah. a champion yeah. you have to instill that yeah. at a very very young age yeah and of course like we're we're here talking about like high level training right yes of course in jiu-jitsu there's a huge community of like people who trains just as a hobby right yeah but in wrestling you don't have that you wrestling is like all in or out, out. And the right. reason why, for the most part, like, yeah. you can't just do, re- from my experience, wrestling isn't a hobby. It's it's like, it was a lifestyle to go to college, to get a scholarship to make the Olympic team. That was the all, the ultimate goal, mm-hmm. was like, you know, you get these kids, their ultimate goal in amateur sports and amateur wrestling was to maybe go to the Olympics, maybe yeah. be a world champion yeah. in Greco-Roman or freestyle. And a lot of those guys ended up, you know, they get to get to the high school level and they become like multiple time state champions. And then maybe that opens up an opportunity for scholarships for college. Mm-hmm. And then they go to college, you know, they go to college and maybe they do really well. Some of them don't. And what's after college for them? Wrestling at the Olympics, you know, so then they try to do a lot of international wrestling and obviously there's no money and, and it's wrestling. hard. Huh, it's coach? it's, it's very, very tough, hard. Yeah. And I think that's why wrestlers are so good. Yeah. Like mentally and physically, like mentally strong, uh-huh. is because there's no money in it, yeah. right? It's just so it's just like love it's it. like pride, yeah. and you do it because you love it. That's mm-hmm. the beauty of amateur sports. You being a jiu-jitsu tournament and you being a wrestling tournament is completely different environment. Huh? Oh, it's it's a it's different level. level for sure. Like I feel like wrestlers, they have attitude. Like <laughs> they want to kill each other. They don't talk with each other. We, they, no, they we bump, don't. They bump each other, right? Oh man, like it's crazy. I huh? got stories like like jiu jitsu. Everybody's kind of like a surfer. Like friends, yeah. Yeah, they're like, hey, what's up? Yeah. You know, they talk right before the. Fight. Oh yeah, wrestlers. Nah, man. Mean dog, you like from the start. <laughs> really? I remember like yeah. 
like even like at the weigh-ins, you know, you know, locker rooms and you got like one team against another team and, you know, they're weighing in for the dual meet, but like nobody's looking at each other. Everybody's starving and been cutting weight for like a week straight. Yeah. And like losing 15 pounds and like four hours, like just, just mean and honorary. Wow. But it's, uh, it's just part of the territory. Yeah. It's part of the culture in wrestling. Yeah. Um, I remember uh, being at a tournament uh -huh. and, you know, you go weigh in and then after you weigh in, they have like, uh, like the brackets, you know, on the yeah. wall. Uh -huh. And I remember I seen these two kids, they were like, Oh look, there's you got that guy in your weight class, that Fred Levy. Like, man, he's like so good. And I was like standing behind him, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm, just standing there looking at him, like, I'm right behind you guys. <laughs> when the kids turn around and look, he goes, Hey, that's him. That's him right there. And I was just like, see, I already got you beat already. <laughs> it was the wrestling is just fun, man. Like I love it. Wow. wow. I just love it. Yeah. yeah intensity level man it's yeah. crazy yeah you have that mindset as well huh coach you, you like have that? to yeah you have to be mm -hmm. like you're gonna win everything you're gonna smash everything like you have to have that mentality because yeah again wrestling doesn't bring in any money right so mm -hmm. it's like you want to win championships right you want to win state championships international championships olympic worlds all that stuff so it's like a pride thing yeah so it's i think everybody's like trying to vie for that same spot in wrestling yeah it's and there's so not hard that many it's of so them. hard yeah it's just one guy you know i mean you... just to make the olympic team for example i mean that's like a whole a whole nother level you know it's like it's not or even a world championship tournament yeah you only get one weight class one person one weight per weight class to wow. compete unlike in jiu-jitsu Everybody can go to the world championship. I mean, I think you have to qualify, right? Yeah, you have to qualify. Like, yeah, but it's not hard to qualify. Yeah, I mean, we have... As a, wrestling, I think. Yeah, we have, like, qualifying for wrestling as well, but it's like you only get one guy on a team to go and compete. But, like, here, you know, in jiu-jitsu at the world championships, you can get, like, you know, multiple people at the same weight class, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. um, for the same team. I mean, you can have two guys on the same team compete yeah. at the same... At, you know, at the same weight class. Yeah. In wrestling, no, you only get one. Wow. And that's hard. It's hard to make it. Yeah. But you talk about, like, there's so much money involved in wrestling, right? No, yeah. not at all. But, like, f for example, a guy like Jordan Burroughs, like, I, 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 I see, like, him, like, doing really well. Well, like, I mean, yeah, they financially. get, those kind of guys get money, you know, from sponsorships. But, like, let's say he's, he's just, like, a, he's, out of the the box, I say. Yeah. Right. He's, he's like he's a rare. special guy. He's yeah. rare, right? Yeah. Because I see like he's older than everyone. Yeah. Like he's longer. Like he's he's, he's competing been around for a long, forever. He's been around forever. Exactly. Yeah. So how old is he? Like thirty something right now? Thirty one, thirty two. I'm not sure. Maybe he's like 32. over thirty, huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. like in wrestling, like for example, how long is your your uh, career like in wrestling? Like your prime. Like well, when you're at 26, you're already old or what? Like 20, 30 years um, old? How do you, you, it you consider like an older guy? It depends. Uh, but probably like maybe 28. I would say 28. Wow. But again, it's a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Look at guys like, um, there was a guy named Chris Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, he had wrestled in Iowa back in the day. Um, old school, like old school wrestler. Mm -hmm. He made he quit wrestling for about 10 years, I think, after college, if, uh, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. He quit wrestling um, to pursue his law. I think he's a lawyer, and he had a law firm. Mm -hmm. And he came back like at 38 years old. Wow. 38 years old. He came back? And made the world championships. No way. I think he placed third in the world wow. at 38 years old. Wow. 38. Wow. Yeah, going against all these young 22-year-olds that was just wow. savages at that time. That's so crazy, man. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, look at guys like Randy Couture. Yeah, I mean, exactly. He was, what, 45 when yeah. he won a UFC World Championship? So, yeah, like Dan Henderson. Yeah, Dan Henderson. Yeah, I exactly. mean, it's, it's a rare... It's rare. I mean, it's not... But do you think it's because, like, culture, maybe, like, the culture is, like, stopping competing when you're 28? Like, everyone followed that culture. <laughs> like, nobody, like, tried to push through, you know? Maybe maybe it's that, you know? Maybe. Or yeah. everyone, like, has a degree already. They just, like, oh, you know, I need to make some money. Yeah. Because it seems like there's no money involved. Like, they, yeah, they got to quit that. wrestling to make money and yeah, provide. A lot the of them family. have families, you yeah. know, and other you know yeah. responsibilities and like you know what man I, i've been doing this all my life yeah you know it's not panning out for me i'm not doing making mm -hmm. money so yeah i gotta go do something else but when you make through the olympics you you got paid well right 
for the medal. Yeah. Like a gold medal. I don't know how much they get for it, yeah. but I know, I mean, it's not a lot, mm-hmm. right? But they do have endorsements, and, yeah. and so they get money that way. And a lot of these guys that make the Olympic team, whether they place or not, a lot of them are, like, coaching at the college level. Like, they're mm-hmm. coaching, like, at D1 schools. Um, but the coach, a, like, they, the coach, they, sorry about interrupting your coach. That's okay. But the coach, the coach that are, um, they, they make money, like, as a coach? Yeah, they make a, I mean, it's, if they're like a head coach at like a NCAA team, like especially if it's a really good team, they probably bring in about like sixty, seventy thousand a year, and that's probably if they're coaching and teaching on campus. Like if they mm-hmm. have a, a coaching and teaching position, um, but a lot of these guys that are still competing with yeah. their coaching, they're like an assistant coach. Um, they probably they probably don't make that much, maybe twenty grand, maybe yeah. maybe if that, and mm-hmm. they might be getting their school paid for. Like a grad assistant, like mm-hmm. they're pretty much like have one more year of college left to get the college degree, even though they're not competing anymore. Yeah. So they get like maybe they get tuition paid for it and maybe mm-hmm. a little bit, bit of money in their pocket. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. But I think, in my opinion, um, wrestlers they they have a better transition to MMA than jiu-jitsu fighters, and I, sure. I'll tell you why. One is mentality, like the mentality in wrestling, mm-hmm. like all this environment of like, you know, you you like just like don't talk with anyone, like that mentality, like of like it's pretty much a, pretty much want to kill the guy all <laughs> like the I'm time. Smash you. Yeah, jujitsu back in the day used to be that mentality. Oh back yeah, back in the day, you like know? when they used to dojo storm. Yeah, but yeah, it used to, but but nowadays is everybody's so friendly, you know, so that mentality, like actually prepare you for like a bottle you know <laughs> yeah and and the second thing is is of course the training methodology mm-hmm. which is like super intense the whole time and i think like when you when you wrestle uh you go to a wrestling competition for example like in wrestling you have rounds you have the first round second round third, third round, round yeah. so you have that transition where like you lose the first round and then you kind of like oh i gotta put my mind in place like in jiu jitsu, don't have that. It's no. just one round each fight. Like in wrestling, every fight is three rounds. Yeah. Right. If you if you don't, if the guy don't get pinned, right. Yeah. Or so, technical fall. Yeah. Exactly. So I think like that helps a lot with the transition, you know. And and plus in MMA, like it's only five minutes each round, which is like you gotta be explosive. Yeah. You know, like, and in jiu jitsu, it's ten minute rounds. Like you don't need that much explosion. You no. know. So I think wrestlers they they have a better transition i'm not saying that jiu-jitsu fighters cannot do well in mma they do really well we have a lot of guys that like fabrice verdun like jack ray you know and oh, other yeah. guys like they do really well but i feel like wrestlers like they have a they like they have a better transition like to understand that concept of like that level of like competition, you know, the mindset and everything. I mean, I think like from the beginning days of the UFC when it first started, wrestlers, it's proven that wrestlers made the transition pretty well. Like, as soon as they started rounds. Yes. Before MMA <laughs> used to be just, just one fight, one remember? Yeah. One, like, no time limit. Yeah. Like, that's when like jujitsu guys are doing really well. Like, they have yeah, voice races, exactly. like doing. But as soon as they start starting rounds, like wrestlers, they start like boom. You know, like appearing. Mark Coleman. Yeah. Um, yeah. You had. Uh, um, is it Mark Coleman? Then you had the. Um... He, uh, remember Heath Herring? Oh, yeah, Heath Herring. Yeah. yeah. God, he was a wrestler, right? Like, yeah. like Cam Velasquez. Yeah. Even Brock Lesnar, you know? Like Brock Lesnar. Yeah. You got Tito Ortiz. Tito Ortiz. Yes. Um, John Jones. Yeah. Like Cormier. And, all these guys are beasts, man. I mean, Frankie Edgar, like all those guys, like yeah. they did really well. Yeah. Um, so they do. They make it, wrestlers make a really good transition yeah. um, right from the high level wrestling scene to competing in MMA. Like, just right off the bat. Yeah. And again, a lot of that like is... Like the hand or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of it is the intensity level, that mindset that they bring. Because um, I tell you what, like wrestling, when we hand fight, like at a high level, when it practices and training... It's like punching It's like other. fighting. It really is. Like yeah. hard level... Like, man, like Olympic uh, Greco-Roman, for instance, if you watch an Olympic Greco-Roman match or like a high level Greco-Roman match, those guys are literally hand fighting like punching each other it seemed like you know it's, it's digging for position trying to get the other guy out of position yeah. so yeah they make a really good transition over yeah. to to MMA for sure because it's one thing you're watching from TV 
and one thing where you're watching live, yeah. like blah, they club being hard. Like, ah. You can feel the intensity. <laughs> you can hear those wow. those like heavy hands. Man, you know? that's amazing. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, so I, I feel that way. I feel I feel people they they um, the wrestlers they they do a really good transition. And you know what? To be honest, like the jujitsu fighters, if they want to fight and do well in in MMA, they need to have wrestling. Yeah, because without wrestling, you cannot work. Yeah. Your jujitsu, you know, like you gotta take the guy yeah, down, exactly. you know. MMA, like you pull guard, you pull guard. It's kind of like hard for you to. Well, we have them in Maya that he does that sometimes, yeah. you know. Demi Maya is a beast, man. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, and, you amazing. Know, he's been shout out Demi so Maya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but here's the crazy thing. So like, you get the, uh, like, guys like Damian Maya, for instance. Like yeah. his wrestling is actually good. Yeah. Like he's actually taking wrestlers. No, down. he 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 does. Like I know him. Like I talk to him all the time. He he work on his wrestling. Like he comes here to the uh, Olympic Center and trains sometimes. Oh yeah, down in uh, yeah. Chula Vista. Uh, yeah, but he trains also in um, Colorado, I think. Colorado Springs, yeah. 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 yeah, he told me that he does that. So that's why he... Yeah, his he wrestling is good, for sure. Take downs. But it's like um, like a lot of these guys that... Like the new breed of athlete coming up now. Mm -hmm. Like they're good at everything, even wrestling. Like yeah. these kids that say started like maybe 12 years ago. Like that's seven, eight years old coming up in these like MMA gyms. And now they're like, you know, 20, 22, 23. They're like good at everything. They're good yeah. at wrestling, like really good. Striking. At striking and their jujitsu is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, compared to like back in the day when it was just like maybe wrestlers coming in. Yeah. That was just hard nosed. They can take a punch or two. Yeah. And they didn't know much jujitsu, but they can still win fights. Mm -hmm. But guys, nowadays, you can't get away with just being good at one or two yeah. things. You have to yeah, play. because these sports evolve so much that, that whoever... Uh, take care of the kid for example there's a guy eight years old right now and he just decided to become an MMA fighter and then he started doing MMA right now he started <laughs> doing his jiu-jitsu he's wrestling you know uh, he's uh, striking and everything and then you see guys with like 20 not 21 years old I remember that guy like Roy McDonald oh yeah no man. like he was the first one full-time MMA <laughs> he didn't have any career in any other sport because usually MMA you have on a career, you build your career yeah. in your sport, and then you make a transition to MMA. Yeah, you make that crossover. Yeah, right. Like, but he was, I think, I think he was the first one that was a cross training guy that trained just like one of the very first. Actually. Yeah, I think since he's a little kid, like he was programmed to to fight MMA. Now you see a lot of guys like that. I think that guy, the the Wonder guy, the Wonder Boy, the Sage Northcutt, the Wonder Boy. You know the Wonder Boy. Oh, yeah, I, him. I, he's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and man, but it's incredible, like how this sport grow like, so much. It's crazy. And and it's like, like for me coming from a strict wrestling background. Yeah. Like, uh, I. <laughs> Like that was it. Wrestling was my life. Like I, I went to sleep wrestling. I woke up wrestling. I dripped wrestling. I ate wrestling. Like I mean, that's all I ever thought about was wrestling all day long, right? Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, you, like kids don't have that. Like they drop wrestling programs all the time. There's not like boys and girls clubs that have wrestling in them anymore, or like really? just sports clubs in general. Um, I mean, that's I think like wrestling and sports is just what. It gave me this mindset, I think, mm -hmm. you know, to keep yeah. me in this kind of environment. Yeah. But growing up, man, like yeah, that's it was just wrestling. That that's all I ever had. Yeah. Man, wrestlers they train hard. They train really hard. It's so <laughs> so intense. Um, coach, yeah, so let's let's talk about um wrestling for jujitsu. You know, wrestling for jujitsu. Um a lot of jujitsu fighters they they hate wrestling, you know. Uh, because it's takedown, you know? yeah. takedown, like being takedown is not cool. Shooting a takedown is not cool when you don't know how to yeah. do it, right? Like it's kind of like it's unforgiving. Hard. It, yeah, for example, for a guy that's a guard player, like for him, it's so much easier, like to just put his butt on the floor, like and then lay his back and then wait for the yeah. guy to come, right? But I always said that, like, if you want to improve your nogi, you gotta know wrestling. You know, like wrestling is important. Um, because all the sweeps will turn into a wrestling takedown. Exactly. So you got to know how to finish. Like, uh, for example, you stand up, you set up an X guard, and you come up. Now what? 
You know, you have the one leg of the person. Now you got to know how to, to run fit, the pipe. Yeah, you know, you got to know how to duck under, how to finish, right? Exactly. But a lot of a lot of jiu-jitsu practitioners, like they they have that that um, you know, like because I feel I don't know, like in judo, in judo, I think I don't know, it's more cultural in jiu-jitsu, but in in judo, like people, they're more into like like do what needs to be done you know like the coach set up the training they just go and do right in wrestling it's the same way right there's a system but in jiu-jitsu because it's one fight people find ways to win yes like they, it's easier for you to find a way to have your game you know mm -hmm. like jiu-jitsu is very personal you can have your own game and it end up of having a lot of people like closing their mind to learn like wrestling or judo yeah or like takedowns you know because they feel they feel like first like you you have like a higher percentage to get hurt i think when you work on takedowns like especially if you don't know how to fall exactly right like it's it's more intense in your body right <laughs> i'm not saying jiu jitsu is intense jiu jitsu is intense oh, it's, too it's, right it's it's, it's, a, it's different high level jiu jitsu is a different yeah, level yeah sure. exactly yeah but i'm talking about like someone that's a blue belt purple belt that needs to improve their takedowns mm -hmm. you know and they have that only like double leg where you like you slap the fl the, the fly you kill the fly and, <laughs> and then you go for levels. the yeah. yeah but like you 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 gotta know how to like change level up and down motion like hand mm -hmm. fight and all that you know and finishing like single legs a nice shot nice high c and stuff like that so um what do you suggest uh people like that trains jiu-jitsu how they they could start learning like wrestling and improve their takedowns for the nogi game well there's there's uh, this is like a multifaceted question i mean like you just have to put your you have to first of all you have to have your mind ready to do it right you have to like make your mind up you're like you know what if i want to make it to the next level i have to work on my wrestling obviously right yeah um and that's just the thing like if you start the, the fight starts on the feet right yeah exactly you know you go you shake each other's hand and then the ref says go and then you know bam mm -hmm. one guy pulls guard maybe one guy doesn't right but yeah. it's like for me i think you have to like want to get the takedown mm -hmm. right so um so first of all you have to have your mind ready to do it you have to make your mind have your mind made up that you want to get the take you know that you want to wrestle and get better at it mm -hmm. two um you have to like i think as a beginner um, like a white belt or a blue belt, even some purple belts um, at the beginning of their career, um, they have to learn the basis first. They have yeah. to. I think hand fighting is important. I think that's yeah. the first thing a person needs to learn. A first. lot of people don't know how to do it just... before they even do a shot. Yeah, I think you need to learn how to hand fight because if you don't hand fight, you can't put yourself in a position to even mm -hmm. get a takedown. Yeah, that's all hand fighting is. It's the hand fighting is for two things, from my point of view, is to put yourself in a position to get a takedown and two to get your opponent tired if you can get your opponent tired then mm -hmm. you can get him out of position yeah. faster wow. so you can get the takedown so your setups become better mm -hmm. so hand fighting creates setup opportunities those setup opportunities create the position for you to get mm -hmm. so i think like before um before you can even learn like a good double leg or single leg, like mm -hmm. the hand fighting has to come first. Yeah. So I would say like work on hand fighting when you work on hand fighting, then learn how to like get the proper tie ups. There's so many different type of tie ups. Mm -hmm. um, then you start developing those. And once you develop tie ups, then you can start working on like different setups. And once mm -hmm. you work on setups, then you got like, okay, I could do this double leg from here. Yeah. I can do this single leg from here. Then I got these different finishes. I mean, there's, yeah. Tons of different double legs, tons of different single legs, tons of different finishes for each one of those. Mm -hmm. I mean, wrestling is complex, actually. Yeah, very complex. But it can be easy and simplified. Yeah. And hand fighting does that. Mm -hmm. You just have to have yourself in a good environment or seek out a good coach. Yeah. yeah. Or a good a wrestling coach or a mm -hmm. good team that, like, especially if you're a jiu-jitsu team. And I think those teams should find good coaches, good wrestling coaches that can teach them, like, but coach, I, this is my opinion. I I think first of all, I feel really blessed to have you, right? Yeah, really <laughs> blessed. Because look, you're black belt in jujitsu. So when you start teaching me here, uh, back 2013, 
it's been like seven, eight years that I'm training with you. Yeah. Seven years. So we 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 won uh, all my super fights with together. Yeah. Like all of, so against Braulio, I started work with you against Braulio, then against Cyborg, then against Galzans, then Felipe Pena. So um, and a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you just hand fight this and that, you know, like man, you do your wrestling, but man, in JGCC super fight you can't pull guard you know you can't actually but you're gonna get a minus yeah, exactly. one you know so i gotta work on my wrestling right so and then in all the fights i completely dominate all these opponents right but i feel that when i see like people working uh with the other wrestling coaches not coach fred right there's like, only yeah, one of me yeah <laughs> Man, like the thing is, coach, you can get a really good coach, a wrestling coach, mm -hmm. but it's hard to find a good wrestling coach that knows jujitsu. And that's that's the right? difference. Yeah. yeah, like a lot of these guys, they they have wrestling coaches, but the coach is just wrestling. You know, they just like a wrestling coach. Then they don't know the jujitsu. They don't know like like the guillotine concept. Like they don't know what can happen like after you take the person yeah. down. So they don't understand, right? And I think like it's very important to do wrestling for jiu-jitsu, you know, not the wrestling wrestling. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's different. It's definitely yeah, different. It's a wrestling for jiu-jitsu, right? Because th that's why here the way I teach the wrestling, from my experience, like doing a lot of years of MMA and then a lot of years. Of yeah, you have experience. How many fights in MMA you have? Coach? Oh, like over forty. Forty yeah, fights in MMA. I used to fight MMA back Damn. in the day when like we used to do tournaments, like three fights in one night type thing. When it was like illegal. My God. <laughs> I remember fighting in Mexico and bull, ring, bull, bull arenas wow, and like wow. just all over the world. But do you have a share dog coach if they put like your yeah, name they, there? Yeah, not all, the share not dog all my fights yeah. on there, but like probably like a majority of them were. Oh, yeah, he's right there, right? Yeah. Wow. But like for instance, like so for me, wrestling for jujitsu is different. Yeah. Like, and that's what I developed. I think yeah. from my experience, I was like, look, certain things I do in regular wrestling. Like, you can get away with so much because only wrestlers react like wrestlers. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, and jiu-jitsu, like... Also, we don't wear the shoes. Yeah. Oh, that's... And that's, I, that's, a that's a lot weird. of wrestlers, coach, they teach things that, oh, grab right here. Like, but yeah. But it's the very shoes slippery. create so much, like, traction yeah, and, and grip, grip right? Yeah. But wrestling for jiu-jitsu is totally different. And I realized that after probably, like, my third or fourth year of, like, training jiu-jitsu, I realized that, like... I can't shoot a double way, a double leg this particular way compared to uh, the way I would in regular wrestling. Mm -hmm. so because if, if I shoot a certain way, maybe I get out of position, I shoot a double leg, maybe like my posture is kind of off, then I can get guillotine really easy. In yeah. wrestling, like if my posture is off and I shoot a double leg and my, both knees are on the floor, I can make up for that and cut the corner and not get choked. Yeah. Right? But in jiu jitsu, yeah. you, you have to like. Man, it's it's just a different. There's a lot of scrambles after the takedown. Crazy scrambles. Right? I mean, you can get caught like in. I can shoot a perfect. I remember I used to shoot like double legs on guys. Like when I first started MMA, like beautiful double legs. And as soon as like my knees touch the floor, guillotine. <laughs> or I get comored because my hands be yeah. on the floor after I yeah. hit a double leg. Or, you know, so yeah. it's like. Or they scramble like the reverse triangles. Oh man! Like all these things. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah, I think like, yeah, like for you guys, you guys don't know that, but Coach Fred, he's releasing his first instructional uh bjj fanatics uh, it's coming up soon you guys can uh if if we if we have that you know right before we we post this like you guys can check on the link uh below on the description but if you're not like he's coming up it's coming up uh, he did a uh, instructional like really basic stuff right Coach? yeah really yeah just stuff. like literally for wow. for beginners like um concepts and you know tie-ups setups um mm -hmm. for beginners you know yeah, somebody from like a white belt and you to pretend to do more right yeah we do yeah we did we did like some other things in there too mm -hmm. um but i have a lot more coming out you okay. know different different yeah. courses that we're going to yeah. be doing that'd be great uh, from intermediate level to nice. advanced level yeah that's awesome um but don't get me wrong the beginner series that i just started um i think a high level jujitsu guy can definitely like get some kind of and that's track. another problem coach because I had other wrestling coaches, right? Like, thankfully, man, thankfully, I had my first wrestling coach here was, of course, I started learning wrestling here in the United States, right? In Brazil, we don't have wrestling. We have Wesley. I still yeah. have Wesley. We don't say, we don't know how to say wrestling, and we say Wesley. <laughs> so, 
So we have Wesley there. But don't feel bad because my yeah. mom, like, she, she can't even say wrestling. Still. I know. She'd be like, you still be wrestling? <laughs> wrestling. I'm like, no, mom, it's wrestling. Yeah. But you know, coach. Um, I love you, mom. <laughs> shout out. So, coach, uh, what is her name? Charlene. Charlene. Shout out, Charlene. <laughs> Mrs. Charlene. So, um, man, I think, like, I have this coach, like, Justin. He used to teach on uh, high school. Mm -hmm. He was a high school wrestling. I remember, like, he came, and then he has a really good methodology as well. Like, when I compete my first, not my first, if they just said I won double gold, that everybody was like, oh, my God, the Galvons wrestling is different. Oh, my God, what happened? So it was Justin. Shout out Justin. Justin right now, is, he lives in Austin, I believe, right now. Uh, he's in somewhere in Texas. But I had Justin, and I had Ender. Mm -hmm. Ender. I remember Ender. You look, you look at Ender, he just like Tokino. He looks like party artist. <laughs> Same frame, you know? Yeah. And and uh, I had another guy, Josh. This guy, Josh, was like 6'5", long arms and, and kind of like long limbs and, and not like that strong, you know, yeah. but long, super long guy, you know? It was a perfect camp. Like, Justin was like short and fast. Ender was just like Tokino. Justin, Justin. Justin, man, yeah. Like, I, I think you never met him, coach. What's his, did he train, like, jiu-jitsu too? Nah, I think he's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, hmm. I think, if I'm not wrong. And Ender, like, he, Ender trained jiu-jitsu with us for a while. And then he ended up going to, um, he, he ended up going to the army and then he moved to Germany. And then I kind of, like, see him, like, once in a while. Yeah. And I have another, this guy, Josh, but Josh... I don't know where is Josh right now. He looks like Josh Barnett, but he's skinnier. You know, like really big and tall, but like not like that buff. Yeah. Like it was perfect, you know. And he actually, he was he's the one that that taught me like uh, how to catch the legs and run and make transitions, right? Yeah. But I remember like they taught me like really basic stuff, really big stuff. And and I had other wrestling coach like before I start working with you. I had like one or two guys, and then. They always like trying to show like fancy stuff because maybe they think like, oh, you know, these guys are black belts, high level jiu jitsu fighters. I gotta show them like something like cool, right? But then you came and then you start showing me like, all right, that's how you hand fight. All right, that's how you your stance. Uh, that's your up and down motion. That's how you walk. Yeah. So I start like, okay, you know, of course when I'm training here, like, uh, it's not like DCC camp. I'm just having fun. It's yeah. different, right? I just having fun. I pull people guard, you know. Mm -hmm. But I know during the DCC camp is different. You know? I, I put myself there, <laughs> it's like a meat grinder. Man, yeah, it's, after. it's different, right? But yeah, so you taught me like pretty much how to walk, how to hand fight. That my hand fight like came from you, and like the blast doubles, like all that. Like it was, it, it was a, a game change, you know. And I feel that a lot of coaches they they don't have that thing where. They go like they build up step by step, you know, step by step. And then sometimes, like here at Atos, for example, we have a lot of guys that are great in wrestling. They're they amazing wrestling, you know, amazing wrestlers, right? And then sometimes they just like, okay, like, yeah, I know this already, right? But they they still repeating, they still drilling that, they're still doing that. So I think the basics are super super important, mm -hmm. and and a lot of people they miss that, you know. It's so overlooked. Yeah, you know, like they think, oh, just because it's basic, I don't need yeah. to learn it. I don't need to, you know, focus on it. Yeah. Because I know more already. But no, the basis is the beginning of everything. Yeah. If you have the basics and you master those, yeah. like truly, truly master the basics. I mean, as basic as hand fighting is, like most people just don't do it still, even to this day. I mean, yeah. you can go to a high level tournament, a jiu jitsu tournament, and still see pretty much the only people that really hand fight is us. Exactly. And yes, do it coach. well. You see Kaina with Rodolfo? Oh, yeah. Bah, bah, boom, boom, boom. Just, <laughs> it was beautiful. like a hand fight win. And then the, in the elbow throw by, you know, yeah. it's like, it's hand fighting is everything. I cannot show You know, they're enough. calling this like the Atos hand fight or something. Like that. <laughs> they call it like Atos Club, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's what they call right now. Because <laughs> all wins. of us do that, you know. It wins. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I think I really wanted to do that here is because that's just the way I was brought up. Like, Again, my, my last coach in college wrestled for Dan Gable mm -hmm. in, at Iowa. His name was David Ray. But coach, don't be wrong. Like, I sometimes, don't let me be wrong here, right? But sometimes I have wrestlers, they come here and visit me. They're like, man, you hand fight like a wrestler. You know, when I roll with them, 
like and then and then i i i don't feel them hand fight me as you hand fight me you know even wrestlers a lot of them they don't know like exactly yeah. the proper way e to hand fight. even some of them right yeah. even some i mean even like really good wrestlers yeah don't hand fight because a lot of people don't like hand fighting you know because it makes them tired yeah. and it takes a lot of energy too yeah. not only do you make your opponent tired if you're really good at hand fighting but it, it takes a lot of resources from you as well yeah like you have to be in shape to hand fight mm -hmm. um and i think like even some wrestlers like really good ones man like I wasn't always a hand fighter. Mm -hmm. I was one of those, like, we call it, like, uh, I was a finesse wrestler. Man. I was one of those ones oh, that yeah. was slick and yeah. hit fancy things and always shoot from the outside. But when I, like I said, my last wrestling coach. You're a snap down coach. Oh, man. I want to, oh, I, I, I wish I could <laughs> snap down like you. Coach Fred, when you snap down people, is like, I feel like the guy goes with the head through the mat like it looks like his head disappear <laughs> it's like a like a what is the name of the animal that put the head inside the, the hole uh, yeah, i forgot it. like an ostrich like you make the guy looks like an ostrich like, oh i'm like no but my, my last coach in college was you know he wrestled for gable and dan gable was always known for like his hand fighting his yeah. cardio mm -hmm. um like you look at like guy's name like I grew up in an era where guys like um, I admired was like Tom and Terry Brands, mm -hmm. Troy and Terry Steiner, like that Iowa mentality type of wrestling. So yeah. like that hard nose hand fight in your face type of uh, mentality. But I didn't learn that until like later towards the end of my wrestling career. And mm -hmm. I think that opened up a whole new era for me. Cause not only was I really good at finesse wrestling where I was slick and fancy and I could hit from the outside and shoot because I was fast. Mm -hmm. But when I mixed hand fighting with that, it made the takedowns even way more easier at that point. Because not only was I slick, but I could hand fight and brawl. Mm -hmm. And I could make them tired. And once you make them tired, then you could score at will at that point. Yeah. And break guys mentally. Yeah. You can break somebody. I mean, case in point, your last ADCC, right? Yeah, and with yeah. with uh, Pino, you, you broke him from hand fighting. Yeah. Like, I remember the first two minutes, he was so tired. Yeah. He was, like, starting to point and to the rev. Like, he's 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 hand fight. He's, like, yeah. slapping me. And, like, <laughs> crying, basically. And yeah. like, but you broke him just from hand fighting. Yeah. That made... Even the other, the other ADCC, when I fought Kalaza, mm -hmm. Hand fighting Cyborg. breaks people. Like, it literally breaks people. Yeah. But it takes a lot of resources from you as well, though. And that's why I trained you guys so hard. Yeah. So that way, not only can you hand fight good, but your, your cardio is going to be there too. Yeah, yeah. And if you need to hand fight for a 20 minute fight, you can because your cardio is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand it. Even wrestlers don't. Yeah, yeah. So Coach Fred runs the ADCC camp here at Athens like since 2013. 13, yeah. And I, we, we work together, of course. Like we plan together everything beforehand. And and then like once we plan that, okay, that's what you're gonna do, coach. And then most of the time I regret for the plan that we make because, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, you'd, you'd be gone home at first, like you'd be like, yeah, the first couple of weeks yeah. of camp we start, it'd be like amazing, you'd be like oh, yeah. yeah, and then like towards like the like the third, fourth, fifth week, I'm like oh like, man. yeah, it's crazy. I'm like it'd why did rough. they do that? You know, it'd be rough. But like man, like. We had great results in oh. all ADCCs, you know, all ADCCs, yeah. and it's only getting better, getting better, getting better. And now we have the new, com like the new kids, like the we have the Rotolos, you know, the twins. We have Ronaldo is improving tremendously, yeah. like in his Nogi. We have Andy Murasaki right now, you know, and we have like other guys like Adam Bradley, mm -hmm. like a lot Peace of guys. Modes, and all these guys, they they have a pretty good wrestling, you know, like um, it's amazing. So. I'm very proud of the results of everything, especially like last ADCC where I won, Kaina won, Lucas and Josh, like they get a bronze medal, yeah. right? We we have a uh, JT Tours won yeah. too. So we have like three gold medals and two bronze. Like it's pretty much, man, amazing. No other team done that, right? I was just so. fortunate to be like a part of that in the history of, you know, Ato starting from 2013. It's just been amazing like yeah. ride to... Yeah. to be a part of you know to help build you know this and um crazy thing is you know do you know the story like how like i got introduced to you no coach <laughs> i see like it's something with Lyra. yeah right? so Lyra jr shout out Lyra jr 
I'm actually senior. So, You're a senior. Shout out to your senior. <laughs> so um, we were. Um, I was. I was training at the arena at the time. I was yeah. training MMA. I was helping out there. But you're teaching there. And I was teaching wrestling. Yeah. I was teaching wrestling there at the arena MMA. And um, Lear Senior was like, "Hey, he goes, Coach Fred, man, like my son's jujitsu professor, you know, Andre Gavon. He wants you to come train, you know, come come help with his wrestling." And he was telling me this for like for months uh -huh. but like i didn't really i didn't like i didn't follow jujitsu really at the time like i was just like a gung-ho mma guy uh -huh. right so i didn't i didn't know names in jujitsu and i didn't like he was just telling me like andre Gavon, and i was like okay yeah yeah but like i was so busy at the time i just kind of like put on a back burner put on a back burner uh -huh. and he kept telling me hey have you went there yet and i'm like no nah, no nah. and i remember he like a, maybe a few weeks later he gave I think he gave you my number or something. Yeah. And then, at the, and then, man, you talked on the phone. And at that time, I could barely understand you. Their English was good then. Nah. But it wasn't like like it is nowhere near like it I is was. Now. I was like blue belt, <laughs> one stripe English. <laughs> and I remember. Now I'm what? Could, my my English is what like right now? What what belt you give me to my English? You know, like brown a, belt. Like a second strike brown belt. Oh man, <laughs> I need that black belt. <laughs> Just one more year. One All more right, year. Come, maybe. One more year, we promote you. Oh my god, but like bad <laughs> habits, you know, like you start. Learning and communicate with people, and people kind of like understand yeah. you, even though you commit mistakes. <laughs> no, you're, you're a lot better now, for sure. A lot sure. better, right, coach? Yeah. So I remember uh, you, you said, "Yeah, you know, like um, you should you should come here and, and come train, you know, come show some wrestling." Uh -huh. And I was like, "All right, cool, yeah, I'll come up there." And I remember I got off the phone with you. Yeah. I looked up your name on the internet, and I was like, "Oh man, he's like he's like really good. He's like." Man, he's like a legend of jiu-jitsu. I'm like, oh, man, like, yeah, I'm going to go there and go train. So uh, I remember I come up to the old academy. Yeah, the old, the old that, academy. The little strip uh, strip mall over there. Yeah. And uh, I remember I came in. He's like, yeah, hey, come train, you know. And I was like, all right, cool. We worked out. And I remember, like, the first session I had with you, I was like, man, this is the school I want to be at. Like, because your level jiu-jitsu at Autos at the time was like, like, it reminded me of like the wrestling aspect of my pedigree, like mm -hmm. high level wrestling and high level jujitsu. So I was like, man, this is the kind of place that I can see me do well at. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I taught a class for you and then you were like, coach, do you want to teach more classes? I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And I remember teaching a few more classes and then I think I had a few a week. Yeah. And then after that, you were like, hey coach, you want to be my coach for ADCC camp? You want to run my whole thing? Yeah. And at that time, I, I think I was a new purple belt yeah and um you were like yeah let's um i was like yeah let's do it and that's one thing that i do well i think right which is like you as a purple belt i'm a black belt war champ and all that but i put you as my coach no problem you know and i was just doing what you say of course i had some bad days right oh, coach? Yeah. like some bad days where you know, I was like putting a lot of pressure and ah, you know, and complaining like coach. Oh, but, I don't want to do that. But that's all athletes, though. You know, like yeah. all, all of us do that. You know, like it's it's like, like we have oh, our coach, coach and he tells us rope drills. This. I'm like, oh no, coach, <laughs> why, why? But you did it though. Right? I always do, yeah. yeah. Like I sometimes I used to like I have some days where I complain, but, but I do always it. do it. That's, you know, that's all that matters. I always do it, yeah. But see, that's the thing though. You asked me to as a purple belt, like to come in and be your coach and run the camp and be in charge of that stuff. It was like, yeah. like that just goes to show you that like the, the, ex the willingness to get better yeah. for you to be Open a mind. legend at high level and black belt. And I'm like a, a brand new purple belt, but good wrestling for you to like, to, to open up and have your mind open up to, for me to do that was just incredible. Like mm. that says a lot just in itself. And yeah for you to like literally buy into like what I was what I was given at the time. Yeah. And we've just been successful after that year after year and year after year. And yeah. I, I just want to I'm just glad I was able to be a part of that. Yeah. Thanks, coach. It's amazing to have you. Um, it's always like when we teach coach to like show his wrestling and then I go show my jiu jitsu there. Some other guys like help us too, and we flow like that. And man, it's been amazing. But good we chemistry. plan everything. Yeah, it's we like plan. good chemistry, guys. And yeah. it's like, I think that's the key. And like, yeah. you know, everybody wants, we help each other out. We like family. This is like the longest gym that I've ever been a part of. Yeah. And I don't even consider it a gym. It's a, it's a, it's a family. It's yeah. a unit. Yeah. 
and um it's amazing it's that loyalty that yeah. like it's hard to come by too like in this yeah. industry whether it's mma and jiu-jitsu yeah. people like jump shit quick man they like disappear yeah but man this is this is like like i believe in i believe in the uh, loyalty loyalty is that. everything you yeah. know i always been loyal with all my coaches like um i have Kareka. still talk about him He's forever going to be my first instructor yeah. <laughs> instructor that brought me to TDD. I have TDD. I'm always going to talk about TDD. You know, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't keep working together because he had some problems and stuff, you know. And then, like, uh, it wasn't like a different, it was a different environment when I, when I try to, when I decide to, like, oh, I know my professor TDD cannot help me right now because his life is issues right yes. i don't know and i was in charge of everything and then i was just like okay i gotta try to train with those who used to train with it you know but the environment wasn't like the the thing that i liked yeah you know and i end up like being the coach there too i mm -hmm. end up like teaching there i just like man uh, it's hard it's and hard then since both. i will be a coach <laughs> let me let me be a coach let yeah. me do my thing you know but um i i they gonna be forever like my my instructors you know and i think like a lot of times people they don't have that sense you know they just like oh you know and 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 those who have closed mindset that like they see for example coach fred purple belt teaching a class that happened before <laughs> that happened before even though a year right yeah that happened before where people like they just look at it like, huh, i don't want to learn this you know this yeah. And then you see where those guys are yeah, today exactly. and then where the other ones that respect and Mm -hmm. build that loyalty are right now yep. you know and 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 it doesn't matter it's not about talent no you know it's not about talent it's about your mindset it's about open open heart open, open, open mind, mind. Mm -hmm. yeah and the and, willingness and, and the willingness to and, learn. and the willingness to learn and it doesn't matter who is there and i always say that to my students say man if there is a blue belt here teaching it doesn't matter if you're a black belt world champ or whoever you are if you have a big name just whatever mm -hmm you got to make sure you respect that guy because he is expanding his energy to teach you something that he can increase your knowledge. Yeah. He has something inside his heart, his mind, his technique that can help you mm -hmm. win and achieve tournaments yeah. and, I mean, and titles, you know? You can learn from anybody. I think exactly. that's I mean, I can learn from I can learn something from probably a beginner and it's yeah. not, not like like when I say like learn, it could be something like emotional. It exactly. could be something mentally. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it could be some kind a life, of life life lesson. Yeah. And that's the yeah. thing, man. Some people just shut themselves off from like being receptive. You have to be receptive to it. And it's easier for you to shut yourself off when you become a champion. Yeah. It's easier. Because you become a champion or become well known. Mm -hmm. You just like I, always, I don't need those guys. Yeah. I don't need this guy. Bah you your cockiness. Like, I always uh, I honestly you know? like I wake up every day and I like when I'm getting ready in the morning, I look in the mirror and I'm like, today I'm going to learn something new. Like I'm going to literally like learn something new. I'm going to learn something from somebody yeah. and it doesn't matter. And I, and I think like, That's I know it might sound, it might sound cheesy to some people, yeah. but like literally like if you wake up every day and like with that mindset yeah. to say, hey, look, I'm going to learn something today. I'm going to learn something new. And then maybe even teach somebody something new today. Like that right there in itself, man, if you have that receptiveness to learning and, and, teaching and then giving knowledge back and yeah and it, and and you know that's everything that's yeah. you can't trade that for anything else yeah i was doing a podcast with my wife and my daughter mm -hmm. right before this one we just released. i think i saw yeah, I saw yeah. That. that's good so one thing that my wife said and it's this part of our mindset or family quote let's say you can't stop learning you can't stop the progress of learning yeah learning is forever Learn is forever. It doesn't matter. You even if you if you don't do jujitsu anymore, or you know you you you're not able to move your body well. You can learn something. You know mm -hmm. you can learn about anything. There there are <laughs> books about anything that you can learn. Yeah. So you need to open your mind to learn. You need to open your mind and, and learn. You know. And I think if feel you feel alive when you do that. You know. It's kind of like a. It like it's one of our purpose you know we got to constantly like learning 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 you know <laughs> and, and and whoever say like oh no i know everything no you don't know anything you know it's it, like, there's like something that you need to learn in every single aspect in your life you know it can be like your career or jiu-jitsu or whatever 
and 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 also like um, family mm -hmm. life and business, whatever you know. So you can learn all the time. I always be like, I'm gonna wake up and. I'm gonna get me a new stripe on my belt today. Like mm. that's just how I look at it. Like I'm gonna mm. get a new stripe, a new white stripe on my belt, because mm -hmm. I'm gonna learn something new. Yeah, you know, yeah. whether it's in a, a life experiences yeah. or. That's why I need to improve my English. I need that stripe, coach. I need that black belt in my We're English. We're gonna give you that black belt for one more year. Let's keep working. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I say that I I only read in English. I don't read books in Portuguese. That's my good. reading is only in English. Only in English. But that's good though. Yeah. And like sometimes I see the things that I typed like years ago. It's I'm like I'm like oh my god, what is that? Like I see like a white belt English there. I'm like, but thank God like I'm I'm learning and and forgive me like if I if I sound like wrongly for any of you, but I have I always have good intentions and try to do my best right here. So yeah, so I have like some questions here. Let me answer a couple questions sure. and then before we finish, coach, right here. Um, let me see. People send questions here. I post on my story every time that I do podcasts. Podcast? Yeah, nice. I post my story. And one guy asked my weight and height. You know, I'm like five. If I say five eleven, no, I'm five ten, <laughs> five nine ish. No, five ten ish. Five ten ish on a good day. Yeah, on a good day when I when I sleep like you know. Like with I don't know, my head in a nice spot <laughs> on the pillow. Um and my weight is like two oh three to two oh five. That's a why that's the way that I walk around. Um that's my weight and height, yeah. Uh, people are here like asking other questions. Oh, what how was uh, we talk about this a little bit, but one guy asked here like what was like how was for you to adapt the takedown of wrestling to jiu-jitsu? Like, you already mentioned that, right? Like yeah. Um, well, before, right? the transition, you know, to adapt, like, takedowns for jiu-jitsu, wrestling takedowns for jiu-jitsu, it wasn't, like, that difficult. It was just, like, minor like minor little tweaks here and there. And, you know, small things can separate, the, can make the difference between good and great, right? Yeah, of course. So it's just, like, the little things, you know, like, hand placement in certain positions, head placement in certain tie-ups, um, finishes, certain finishes, you have to finish certain ways, you know, like compared to like, like I would finish double leg different in jiu-jitsu compared to the way I would do it in wrestling. Single leg, same way. Everything, everything has to change, but like in a very small way. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, that could be complex and that could yeah. be a conversation just in a, in, in a two-hour conversation right there. Mm -hmm. But just as a basic level, like, it's like small minor adjustments here and there. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So one one guy asked here like uh, if we have summer camps for kids here. Yeah, we do summer camps. Mm -hmm. Um we announced before, but usually we have every every um every during the all summer, all year round like we have two uh, a lot of classes for yeah. kids like every day like from 4 to 6 o'clock. Some of our kids train for 2 hours straight. So I feel like it's amazing um, training facility for kids as well. Shout out to Professor Nisar who does a great job. Nisar with was good. Yeah, Enrique Brissano and Rafael Vasconcelo, Emily, and all the other guys. We that have like the great kids. coaches yeah. here. We have great coaches. All the other guys that taught before. We had like Josh Inger that taught like the kids also. Coach Fred helped with the kids mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Sensei Farid helped with the kids like oh, yeah. back in the day. Also, um, I have uh, JT Torres that helped yeah. us with the kids here too. So. Um, another guy asked here, uh, how was coach as a, as a trainer, as a trainer, how was for you to see my evolution in wrestling? How oh. was for you? How did you feel about that? How was for you? I mean, like until now, like from my start until now. Well, on a personal level, like <laughs> I remember when we first started, your wrestling has always been good. It's been solid. Like yeah. I rem like I would say when I first got here in 2013, your wrestling was like, I would say like maybe a, maybe like a sophomore high school level, but like a good high school sophomore, like a state champion kind of level wrestling when mm -hmm. I first got here. Mm -hmm. And now, it, dude, I've seen you like smash some good wrestlers, like mm -hmm. definitely all Americans for sure. Like I remember me and you, 
you couldn't, I couldn't even like, we used to hand fight pretty good, but now like I can't even like hand fight you like the way I used to, because now your hand fighting has, it's just a different level. Like it's hard to hand fight with you now. And Worst coach. It's hard. No, it really <laughs> is. Like that's that's like, guys, I'm serious. No joke. <laughs> like your hand fighting has gotten that much better, like over the years. Yeah. And your your technic your technical ability, like yeah. your single legs, your double legs, your finishes, yeah. like it's extremely high level. Uh, yeah, I would say my my wrestling is is basic, but advanced. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I can hit the basic stuff against advanced guys. Exactly. You know? So. And it start with basic positioning. Yeah. You know, it's it's just yeah. amazing. It's awesome. Thank you, Coach. Um, one guy asked here, what help? Uh, what helped you stick to BJJ after the injuries? Like, you know, I'm a, I've been an athlete and competitor all my life. You know, since uh, it's I was like Rolando Samson asked that. <laughs> Shout out Rolando. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I've been an athlete all my life, and um, it's I couldn't see myself doing any uh, anything else. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. a college degree. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. like a a coffee company. Um, that we started a few few what is the name it's uh levy's brew dot com oh wow yeah we uh um, we do like fresh roasted coffee delivered oh, nice. to your door basically Ooh, um so check it out www.levysbrew.com nice coach um but yeah i've been an athlete all my life and like with all the injuries i think like wrestling actually like like that perseverance of like how hard wrestling is like going to practice every day working through injuries and you know, making weight four, five, you know, three times a week for tournaments and dual meets and like I think like growing up with that mindset yeah. and that that I mean, because a wrestling season is long, yeah. like it's extremely extremely. How long, long is the season? Like in high school, I mean, it's like we start like in like Septemberish, like preseason, and it mm -hmm. ends in like March. Like that's a long time for high school yeah. college kids, right? So. Growing up with like that kind of level of like um, like competing and training every day and like it helped me like persevere through my injuries though because like I just knew I couldn't give up. I mean after my last hip replacement they told me I would never literally they said I would never be able to compete again, much much not even train wrestling or jujitsu again. That's wow. what they told me, and I was like no, there's no way I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna give up. And you still train? Yeah, I still train. I still. You feel pain sometimes, coach. Um, when it's cold out, yeah. 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 But I mean, I'm I'm good. I'm healthier now than I ever have been. Nice. Like, and I feel great. That's awesome, coach. Mm -hmm. Um, one guy asked here, like, how important is wrestling for jiu jitsu? We already answered that during the podcast. Um, another one is, they ask me like, oh, us, right? Uh, what do you like better, fight? On IBJJF or ADCC, you know, it's different. Yeah, they're both. Like actually, no gi. I don't think I ever compete no gi in IBJJF. Really? Yeah, I only I compete gi in IBJJF. Oh. Yeah, because when I was a, a full time competitor, I would say like now I'm not full time competitor. Like I'm I'm a coach for the last years, you yeah. know, a couple of years and maybe like the last ten years, you know, since <laughs> I opened my school. Like I always like do half and half. Uh, but um, I fought a lot of IBJJF on with the gi, mm -hmm. a lot, all the major tournaments with it, but never no gi. I didn't know that. Actually. Yeah, but uh, no gi, I fought a lot of ADCC, and I think that's why I'm every time that I fight no gi, every time that I'm training no gi, my mindset is the like the ADCC rules, the ADCC rule set. You know, yeah. I don't like to fight. For example, like back in the day. Nowadays you can do heel hooks on IBJJF, yeah, they just but it's still, there, but right? yeah, but it's still, still like you cannot do certain things, you know. It's still, but for me, like in my students here, my academy, I, I teach heel hooks for everyone, you know, and everyone do, do everyone good. do really well, yeah. and and we don't get hurt like because we train heel hooks, you know. And train just smart like, too, you know. Yeah, that's, you that's just gotta cute. know what what's happening, you know. You gotta know what's happening. So another guy asked here, like, uh, B, uh, BJJ after 40, any tips for me starting out? Oh, okay. Can I be on the show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Who is this guy? Uh, is it Chef, uh, Chef Charles? Chef Charles. Man, Chef Charles, maybe one day you can be in our show. Maybe one day you can be here. Um, but, yeah, so a tip for someone that starts after 40. is like, I'll start first, and you can mm -hmm. say something, Coach. Um. I think like you just, it's jujitsu is something cool. Like the, 
the, the, something cool that we have in jiu-jitsu is, is uh, that you can't start at any age. Like, you cannot start wrestling at 40, <laughs> you, right? You cannot start wrestling Yeah, that'd at be kind of rough. Yeah. You'd be having broken bones you everywhere. Can, exactly. <laughs> And even judo, like it's hard for you to start judo like after 40. It's like jujitsu, yes. You yeah. can start jujitsu like 60, 70. You can start jujitsu at any age because um, it's a very gentle art and it's super cool, great environment. I, I believe like the key is to just do what all people that start in jujitsu, doesn't matter what age, like is just have an open mind, be consistent. You know, like yeah. consistency is very, very important. Um, be smart, you know, with who you're training. And what I suggest, like, for you know, a lot of people, they think, like, oh, my God, uh, I'm a white belt. I cannot roll with a black belt. <laughs> yeah. They're going to kill me. But actually, it's better for you to roll with high-level guys. Because they know how to roll. They're exactly. not going to hurt you. Yeah, exactly. Then you, hold, then you roll with someone that doesn't know anything. Yeah, those are know? the worst. Like, if a white belt rolling with a white belt, I say that it's two blind men <laughs> fighting inside a dark room. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or two exactly. bl two blind men trying to look for like a penny in, exactly. a, in a dark room. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like those, so those are like the worst. I think like uh, my suggestion as a white belt, it's good to do to have private lessons, and during those private lessons, you roll with someone that understands jujitsu. And even during the classes here, we have at Atos headquarters, we have the basics curriculum at first, right? And then, like, we have, uh, which is the intro class, where all the white belts, they train, they do specific training uh, between the, each other. But then we have the basics class, which is, like, from white to purple mm -hmm. belt. And the reason that I like to have blue and purple belts there, it's because they uh, they know what they're doing, you yeah. know, with you. And then you learn faster because they know their motion, they will, the way they, gri they grab, the way they move. So you learn faster, actually, when you... When you um, role with someone that knows what they're doing you know what is your suggestion for someone that started at 40 years old coach oh man um just be patient in the process yeah um come in willing ready to learn yeah um don't have an ego yeah like don't be afraid to tap exactly um and just like taking care of your body yeah. you know like Self-care is so important, you know, like from dieting, stretching, well, eating well. your nutrition, your, your sleeping, your well. just taking care of your body, you mm -hmm. know, getting rest, sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, literally the basis that we sometimes we overlook, even mm -hmm. as athletes, you know, yeah. um, you know, your body. Sometimes you need like more recovery, especially as we get older. Mm -hmm. We do need more recovery yeah. uh, compared to when we were younger. Yeah. Um, stretching before and after training is important yeah um and even after 40 i believe like you you have like a well-established life already yeah so you can invest more in yourself yeah right like sometimes when you like you start as a teenager you don't have the money to invest in yourself no. like maybe you should have like a good physical therapist where they can like take care of your body they can do like injury prevention workouts and stuff like that you know i mean i, I look at it this way when we were young we're like a um like a brand new like mustang right yeah like brand new off the lot yeah super powerful uh -huh. super explosive you know shiny and then like as we get older by the time we get in our 40s we're like we're like that that shiny new ford that was off the lot like 20 years ago mm -hmm. is now starting to get rusty right it's starting mm -hmm. to change colors and things are falling apart on it so we have to fix those little things those little maintenance issues you yeah. know from getting good massage therapist and good therapy and like mm -hmm. acupuncture and like uh, the supplements like you got to put good gas in the car too yeah and that's like good nutrition yeah um you know good supplements to put in your body to stay mm -hmm. strong and recover so mm -hmm. yeah as we get older um at the end of the day it's take care of your body yeah um if you want to train jujitsu you can train jujitsu for a lifetime yeah if you train hard but like train smart though if you train mm -hmm. smart that allows you to train hard yeah um, for your level yeah right? another thing that i see too like starting at that age like after 40s like 40 50s like it really depends off your background too like if you have a at an, an athletic background some people they they did like american football or mm -hmm. wrestling or uh, any other sport like like when they're younger but some people they did nothing yeah. they just like that's the first thing they ever do in their life you know and i think like sometimes you can have a training partner 
that has your age, but they have a, an athletic background. Like yeah. they, they did sports before and you didn't. And I think one thing that people do all the time, they compare themselves with, with other uh, people, yeah. you know, and that can like frustrate you a little bit. I think you just got to have fun, you know, don't compare yourself with others. Focus on your own improvement, you know, of course, helping other people as well. Yeah. And give your best, you know, that's, do your best. That's important. It's, it's, you know. it's your own journey. That's yeah. the beauty of like sport, uh, whether it's, you know, sports in general um, and your life in general. I mean, it's yeah. it's unique to each individual. Yeah. And like, like in jujitsu, like you don't have to be like, oh, well, we started at the same level as white belts and now he's a blue belt, but I'm still like a white belt. Yeah. Like, no, that doesn't matter. It's your own journey. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. It's yeah. just as long as you get there. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. There's no time limit. The path is the same, but some people, they can go faster than others. Some people you know? can go like a straight line all the yeah. way to the top. Some guys going to have to go a zigzag. Yeah, yeah. Some do a U-turn. Some do a round As long as you don't give up. But yeah, just don't quit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's... whenever you're ready, you're ready. You're going to be there and you're going to achieve your black belt. Yeah. You know, so that's the goal. That's, That's awesome, it. Coach. Coach, thank you so much for coming, right? Thank you guys for it having me. It was amazing, me. man. You were the best, right? Thank you, Professor. You're the best coach. I, I wouldn't be ever. here without if it wasn't, you know, <laughs> without you for sure. Oh, man, thank you. Yes, and, and that's it. So I, I would like to give a shout out to all the Atos headquarters students, all you guys that watch the podcast. Tell your friends about the podcast, right? Hit that, link, that like button, right? Subscribe. Uh, you guys can learn also from us. Aratos BJJ online. We post like techniques. We have over 10,000 hours of techniques. We nearly like 5,000 classes right there. Man, you guys can take a lot of advantage. And we have all the courses at BJJ Fanatics as well. Shout out Bernardo Freya and Michael Zenga. Thank you so much for all you guys doing uh, for the Jiu Jitsu community. Okay, so, and that's it, guys. One more podcast. Super happy to have my yes. coach here, the Bass in the World. The Lightning Man, Coach Fred Leave. Okay, Us, thanks, enjoy guys. and see you guys soon. Us.